Okay, let me introduce module four. All right, module four, we've been working up uh, to this here. In, in module three, we talked about optimal portfolios. We talked about four cases. We uh, figured out what the efficient frontier was, the Markowitz efficient frontier, and what an optimal portfolio consists of. Now, with an understanding of optimal portfolios, what we can do is move to finding a, an asset pricing model, all right? Uh, not the type of asset pricing model that you worked in Module 2 where you valued a firm, but I'm talking about an asset pricing model in a portfolio context, all right? So ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to get down here to number four where we have an asset pricing model where we're hopefully going to be able to find alpha, all right? And, and you don't know what alpha is right now. Alpha can be defined simply as the risk-adjusted expected return of a particular portfolio. We're going to try to find alpha for various strategies in this section, all right? But in order to get there, we have to do a little bit of math to understand theoretically what we're talking about. So we're going to talk in Chapter 8 about a single-factor model. What we're going to do is we're basically going to say there exists some model, and in that model, we can control for what we'll call systematic risk or market-wide risk. All other firm-specific risks doesn't really matter because we're going to be investing in portfolios here. Do you understand? So, so, so what we're interested in is we're interested in identifying market-wide or systematic risk. Why? Because all idiosyncratic or firm-specific risk can be diversified away. And the only risk that matters is the risk that will affect the entire market. What's a good, uh, a good measure of systematic risk? Well, right now... Uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic is probably the best thing that uh, comes to mind here, right? So, so we're going to uh, figure out how to identify the exposure of individual firms and portfolios to that systematic risk. Uh, and then we're going to try to figure out uh, why it matters, right? So we're going to try to figure out why a single factor model that can measure systematic risk, why it matters. And what matters is the ability to obtain alpha, Okay. The most common single factor model is a capital asset pricing model. Uh, we're going to talk about the assumptions. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the derivation of the CAPM. Uh, we're going to estimate the CAPM. Listen, pay attention to this video. This is going to help you on the project. All right. Uh, then we're going to talk about arbitrage pricing theory, which actually came after CAPM. This is chapter 10 here. Uh, we're going to talk about arbitrage pricing theory. Uh, we're going to talk about what happens to idiosyncratic risk and what happens to alpha in, in arbitrage pricing theory. And that generates the idea of creating multi-factor models. We'll talk about two different types of multi-factor models, although hundreds of them exist. The Chenrol and Ross model is not as common as we thought it was going to be. The more common model is the Fama French three-factor model. And this one has been built on hundreds of times. And this is the model that we're going to use to try to find alpha. Okay. Again, alpha is risk-adjusted expected return for a portfolio. This is how investment analysts, buy and hold strategists, uh, try to identify a positive uh, trading profit. Okay. In fact, you may or may not have heard of a website called Seeking Alpha. I check this every once in a while. So Seeking Alpha, uh, these guys sponsor a CNBC uh a CNBC conference where they have some of the best investors sit on panels and talk about stuff. Anyway, Seeking Alpha, the idea of Seeking Alpha is trying to find the alpha that exists from some of these multi-factor models. Okay, So it's taken us a long time, but eventually Module 3 gave us optimal portfolios. From those optimal portfolios, we can uh, understand uh, single-factor models, what happens to the idios idiosyncratic risk in those portfolios, what happens or what the interpretation of alpha can be, and then we finally generated a working model that we can use to find alpha.